Now, traditional rulers have been with us for so many centuries, and I mean centuries. Long before Nigeria came together in 1914, this area that is now called Nigeria was constituted by various kingdoms, big kingdoms like the Benin Kingdom and the Oyo Kingdom and smaller kingdoms. They all came together to form Nigeria that we know today in 1914. And the traditional rulers have remained with us, helping us to sustain some of our traditions and cultures. And they're not just men who sit on thrones and wear big crowns and big regalia and, and uh, surrounded by chiefs and all that. Some of them are really brilliant, like this gentleman whom we visited. He's not just a traditional ruler, but also a writer and a published author. When we heard about that, we just had to snoop. Enjoy this. Eze Chris Akani, the paramount ruler and Evo IV of Rumu Evolu community in Port Harcourt, hosts Channel's Book Club to discuss his book, Okuta, Hegemony, Culture and Politics among Ihurohong of the Niger Delta. Eze Akani, who is also a lecturer in the Department of Political Science, Ignatius Ajuru University of Education, Rumu Lumeni, River State, is the author of several other books. He speaks on why he chose to write on Iruwaron people. During my undergraduate days in the University of Potako Choba, I was given a topic, or I chose a topic to write for my BSc thesis. The topic was the urbanization of Rumokuta from 1970 to 1988. That gave me an opportunity. That exercise, academic exercise, gave me the opportunity to go around the whole clan called Mokuta. And of course, there was no way I could have discussed positively the organization of Mokuta without having a little history of the clan. Where again, you had elders. 90 years, 80 years, who were living. So they gave me an opportunity. They gave me raw, the raw history of Mokuta. And uh, when the work was completed, it earned me a good grade. By the 21st century, I discovered that almost all the elders that I had contact with, have died. And that the 21st century was also a century of globalization, full of competitive, if you don't have the competitive advantage, you are pushed back. And if you don't globalize your particulars, no person will do it for you. That was why I decided. Second, I also, with other lecturers in, the, in my university, wrote a brief history of Ihron. It gave me an opportunity to go around the entire Ihron ethnic nationality, comprising four local governments, Portacot, Obiabo, Ikwere and more. And that, that book received uh, a wide acceptance and interest. And I said to myself, if I can do this for the nationality, why would I do it for my own clan? Especially when elders who are seen as the custodians of traditional culture are almost gone. That was why I decided to embark on this. Luckily, 
luckily, uh, some of the manuscripts that I used when I was interviewing all the elders, was, I did not destroy them, I kept them. It became a challenge to me to present what I call an objective, class-oriented, and uh, non-primordial present, uh, presentation exposition uh, of the crisis of Nigeria. And if, if you read the book, you will discover that I traced it from the beginning of the creation of the Nigerian state down to the discovery of oil in 1956 with its commercialization in 1958 to now. The same class that has presided over the looting of Nigerian wealth right from 1960, they see the same class. As you read the book, you will discover all the things I'm saying. Eze Akani further explains his interest in Okuta. What I'm interested in is that it's my own history. It's part of me. I am part of Mokuta. And uh, today, my fulfillment, my joy is that I have been able to document our own history. Further researches can be carried out, can be carried out uh, looking at the foundation I have laid. Because you cannot carry out any research in Mokuta without making reference to this book. That is my joy, first. Second, I've been able to bring out our sufferings, especially during the Nigerian Civil War, a war that no Iroha man or woman knew about it. Not to talk of Rumokuta, we didn't know about the war. In fact, the war was a fairy story to us. Uh, we heard that uh, one Hausa man and one Ibo man, they were fighting in Lagos market. And at the end of the day, the Hausa man brought dagger and fight ensued. That was what we had as young boys and young girls in those days. No person knew about the war. But by researching on this book, I was able to place a historical background the beginning of the war, the political economy that led to the Nigerian Civil War, and the effect on a place called Rumokuda. Eze Akani has a PhD in political science, specializing in political theory, human rights, African, and gender studies. <laughs> <laughs>